We begin a week-long series this morning called Early Essentials, and Dr. Holly Phillips of WCBS-TV is here to tell us about the must-have items in the medicine cabinet. Good morning to you, Good Dr. Morning, Phillips. Debbie, how are you? Good to see Good you. Good to see you, too. All right. You say that our medicine cabinet should be stocked with certain things. Why is that so important and not just run out to the store when you need it? Right. Well, you really want to cover your family, and but particularly any guests who come over, particularly if they're mm. children. You know, children to end up with problems in the middle of the night, especially if they're kids having sleepovers. You just want to be covered. You don't want to have to run out to the pharmacy in the middle of the night. So this is just about being prepared. Exactly. So we start with, uh, as, as doctors call them, analgesics, <laughs> but pain relievers. Right, right. The key with the pain relievers is that not everyone tolerates every type. So you really need to keep three varieties around. Try and keep an acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, mm -hmm. um, ibuprofen, as well as aspirin. And you want to keep children's formulations of those medications on hand as well, because they're, of course, different dosages. And you need all three of those? Any one of them wouldn't do? Well, it's really good to be covered with all all three because not everyone can take every type. For ah. instance, people with stomach problems may not do well with aspirin or, or ibuprofen. We have different considerations for every person. Okay, and then sure. we move to this next section, which I think is probably most common, and this is stomach and indigestion things. Exactly. This is a little more complex because with the stomach illnesses, you're dealing with a wide variety. But one of the first things to stock up on is Pepto-Bismol. That'll help with the stomach aches, uh, nausea, diarrhea. Mm -hmm. And also, these are essential. Keep a chewable antacid on hand and heartburn tends to flare up in the middle of the night and you don't want to be caught out there running to the pharmacy. And Holly, I see we have a name brand here of this, but we also have a generic brand mm -hmm. here, a store mm -hmm. brand. Does it matter whether we get generic or name brand? For the most part, absolutely not. For almost all products, they're virtually the same in quality. What you want to do is look at the labels and make sure that the active ingredients, right where it says active ingredients, you want to make sure that those are exactly the same. And for the most part, the quality is identical. Then it just doesn't matter. Not of at all. Course, you can this save time some of money with the store brands. Absolutely. This time you're a lot of tree pollens coming into the air. I know allergy sufferers like me have really taken a wallop. Right, right. Need to have sinus allergy and cold medicine. Ag absolutely. Allergy medicine is essential, but you can really cover yourself with just one type. Uh, you need an oh. antihistamine, uh, really a non-drowsy antihistamine. It doesn't have to be a, a, a name brand at okay. all. But with the non-drowsy antihistamine, you're going to cover pet allergies, seasonal allergies, and if you have guests over, you don't have to worry about them becoming drowsy and trying to drive home at night. While we're here, we were talking just a little bit earlier. There's a little bit of controversy about mm -hmm. giving small kids, you said particularly cold flu and allergy medicines, exactly. whether or not it's effective and whether or not it's safe for them. Well, for children under two, we're really sort of trying to hold back on using the cold medicines. Number one, it hasn't been shown to shorten the course of their illness, and sometimes kids do end up with side effects. So if you can hold back on those medications for them, it's usually better. And of course, you want to consult your doctor before Absolutely. you give your child anything. Then finally here, first aid. We saved the best for last. This is the sort of thing you're always running out to the pharmacy for at the last minute. Mm -hmm. You really want to stock up on Band-Aids, uh, some type of uh, antiseptic, whether it's hydrogen peroxide uh, or alcohol there. You need a triple antibiotic. I think they have uh, Neosporin is a good one, as well as tweezers. I think we've all been in a position where we're sort of trying to take out a, a uh, splinter with needles and whatever else we can find. So if you just have it on hand, a safety it makes pin a big difference. Or something exactly. like that. <laughs> all right. You know, now these are things you you say you should have in your medicine cabinet, but should you have your prescriptions in the medicine cabinet too? This is kind of an obvious question, especially with little kids. Right, right. You really want to try and separate those out if you can. And even if you have kids or teens, you might want to use a locked medicine cabinet for those as well. All right, Dr. Holly Phillips, sure. great information. Thank you so much. Great to be here, Happy Debbie. Happy Labor Day. <laughs> you too.